evaporation at the end of this lesson you will be able to define evaporation explain the process of evaporation explain the factors affecting evaporation it's a bright morning the gleaming sunshine on the surface of lake water is a beautiful sight on one side of the lake fishermen are busy scattering the fishes on land for drying on the other side laundry men are busy drying the washed clothes along with these activities pot makers are carefully arranging the pots for drying under the sun all these activities share a common process called drying that is the removal of moisture from wet cloth fresh fish and wet clay by the action of heat this process is termed as evaporation from the above actions it is clear that evaporation is the conversion of liquid into gaseous form let us learn about the evaporation process and the factors affecting it in detail generally when the atmosphere is calm and no other agents like heat wind etc disturb the water surface the molecules of water remain stable as the sun rises and the wind starts to blow the energy from the sun is transferred to the water which agitates the water molecules thus the water molecules gain momentum and begin to move here and there once the water molecules gain enough kinetic energy they tend to escape into the atmosphere breaking down the intermolecular forces upon constant supply of heat energy this process continues and the water molecules get accumulated above the water surface after reaching the saturation point the surface medium is no longer able to hold the water molecules at that instant the water vapors exert a partial pressure called as the saturated vapor pressure which is denoted by es similarly the air in the atmosphere exerts a pressure called as the vapor pressure of air which is denoted by ea when the vapor pressure of air ea is equal to the saturated vapor pressure of water es evaporation stops and this stage is known as the equilibrium state however this state never happens in nature but there is always a difference in the vapor pressures of air and water in the atmosphere this difference is called as the vapor pressure deficit as long as the wind blows continuously the accumulated water molecules are carried away creating a vapor pressure deficit and thus accelerating the evaporation process this was clearly described by a scientist named john dalton in the year 1802 under favorable conditions evaporation is proportional to the vapor pressure deficit that is e is equal to c into es minus ea where e denotes evaporation and c represents the coefficient of evaporation this law is commonly stated as dalton's law apart from the supply of water the source of heat and the vapor pressure deficit the evaporation in an area is influenced by several other factors let's discuss those factors in detail basically the quality of water like turbidity color odor ph etc affects the rate of evaporation this can be demonstrated by experimenting with high turbid water and normal water when two containers containing normal water and turbid water are placed in sunlight for a considerable time you can observe the level of the normal water to be lesser than the level of the turbid water this is because the suspended particles in high turbid water like saline water blocks the water being evaporated besides the surface area of water bodies also affects the rate of evaporation in case of large water bodies the rate of evaporation is high due to the exposure of larger area to sunlight moreover it also facilitates easy movement of wind on the water surface on the other hand the rate of evaporation is less for smaller water bodies thus the surface area of water determines the rate of evaporation 
based on the surface area, the wind acceleration differs, which in turn alters the evaporation process. We already know that wind has the ability to carry away the water molecules from the surface of water. When the velocity of wind is high, the evaporation of water is more. Thus, the wind speed is directly proportional to the rate of evaporation. The wind speed also affects the temperature of an area, which in turn alters the evaporation rate. That is, when the temperature increases, the rate of evaporation also increases. Hence, we can say the rate of evaporation varies with different seasons. For instance, during winter season, the evaporation of water is less due to low atmospheric temperature. While during summer, the atmospheric temperature is high which eventually increases the rate of evaporation. Usually, the temperature of an area depends on the radiation of sun. Radiation is nothing but the heat energy released from the sun. When radiation increases, the evaporation increases. This can be demonstrated by plotting two different graphs between evaporation depth against time and solar radiation against time. The two graphs clearly show that radiation and evaporation are directly proportional to each other. Whereas, atmospheric pressure is inversely proportional to evaporation. Furthermore, it is a known fact that when altitude increases, the atmospheric pressure decreases and this affects the rate of evaporation. For instance, in hill stations, evaporation is more at the top of the hill. This evaporation causes continuous precipitation in hilly regions. Apart from other factors, soil characteristics such as namely soil capillary characteristics, water depth, soil color also influences the evaporation rate. Thus, by learning the factors that influence the evaporation of an area, you can analyze the environmental changes that are closely associated with the evaporation process. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this lesson. Evaporation is the process by which a liquid is converted into gaseous form. The factors which affect evaporation are quality of water, surface area of water bodies, wind speed, temperature, radiation and atmospheric pressure.